My new graphics card's got the clocks, it rocks. But it was overclocked before I opened the box. We are, of course, talking about the, the Corsair Hydro GFX. Now, this is Corsair taking their all-in-one liquid cooler technology and all the stuff that Corsair is known for and combining that with an MSI GTX 980 Ti, or TI if you prefer, although NVIDIA calls it Ti, and I don't know why all the hate around Ti versus TI, but it's, you know... Whatever, that's a discussion for another time. This thing is basically a graphics card with a built-in all-in-one cooler. Now, it doesn't totally eschew fan cooling. There is actually a fan for cooling the VRM and other components, but the GPU itself is cooled by a Corsair all-in-one liquid cooler. Now, Corsair, for those of you guys that don't know, is uh, probably the largest all-in-one cooler distributor, vendor, whatever, worldwide. Now, at least a couple of years ago, they moved more units than all of their competition combined. And so they're sort of taking that expertise and their experience working with all-in-one coolers and sort of combining it with a graphics card. Now, there are products out there that will take your uh, graphics card and let you sort of take the heat sink off and put something on. But this has actually been tested and vetted by engineers to make sure that other parts of the GPU get adequate cooling. You know, the, the other components like the VRM components, RAM, that sort of thing. This, the liquid cooling, is just the GPU only, but they still have a blower fan, almost like the reference blower fan, for everything else. And so the question is, does that actually let this card perform better? Given the overclockability of the 980 Ti, does this actually give you more headroom? Is it a quieter card? Those are the questions that were at the front of my mind before I actually did my testing. Now, on the other 980 Ti graphics cards that we've tested, we've actually gotten quite a good headroom in terms of overclockability. I mean, we're hitting 1350 pretty regularly with other high-end 980 Ti cards that we've tested, and this is certainly a high-end graphics card for gaming. So I was curious, what would it actually do? Could we actually overclock it even further? And the answer is basically yes. Not only could we overclock it further, it was actually more stable um, than I was expecting. It was more stable than most of the other air coolers that we've tested. In fact, uh, with GTA 5, with everything maxed out, although FXAA was uh, uh, only, no, there was no MSAA, and the uh, grass was set to very high instead of ultra, this thing could clear 50 frames per second in GTA 5 at 4K easily just one graphics card now if you've been following us for a while you know that we've sort of gone 4k crazy and that we love our big 40 inch 4k monitors but getting really amazing frame rates with 4k is kind of challenging sli does it but you don't really get the bang for your buck that you should with sli so far i've found crossfire to actually be more scalable in a multi-card configuration than sli on the nvidia side and one 980 tie at 4k with everything at the higher end of the spectrum is just a hair too slow but this gives you the headroom to get there. Now we've gotten there with other graphics cards in, in terms of like doing overclocking, you know, getting past 1300 megahertz, maybe going for 1350 megahertz, something like that. And this card is no exception. Pushing 1350 plus on this card was actually a little bit easier than I expected. Of course, you use the MSI graphics utility to actually do that. And we've got a full suite of benchmarks on our website for you guys to take a look at the performance of this graphics card. But I'll tell you, the short version is I was blown away by the performance, the overclockability, and how quiet the card is. This thing actually is quieter and runs cooler than some of the other cards that are actually designed to run hotter uh, but be quiet. So I was really surprised by that. And even under a full load, even with the blower fan, I mean, you can definitely hear the blower fan kicking up when you're basically doing the, you know, the unengined benchmark at 4K, but it's not loud. It's not insanely loud. I mean, some of those Nvidia cards, when the blower fan really kicks up, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner. I was pleasantly surprised that wasn't the case because when I took it out of the box, I was like, oh no, blower fan, this is not going to be good once the card sort of starts to heat up. For the test systems, we actually have two test systems. For our Z170 test system, we've got the MSI Z170A Gaming M9 Act. That's with the Intel Z170 chipset. We use that on our test bench. It's sort of an open air configuration. That's really a best case scenario. We also wanted to test it on X99, so we used it in our X99 editor system. Now, the thing about the X99 editor system is that it's inside a Lian Li A51, but we've modded the case. So we could actually run SLI graphics if we want to. So with this, I'm actually going to mount the GPU cooler, the liquid cooler, in the front of the case and exhaust the warm air out the front. This is kind of crazy because I've also got the all-in-one liquid cooler for the CPU and I've also got the RM1000i from Corsair crammed in this same case. So this is a really absurd, bizarre setup, but this case is tiny and so 
because it's tiny, it's also sort of the worst case scenario in terms of heat dissipation. There's not really a lot of room for 17 fans in this case. So we're going to see how it performs that way and see if, you know, the total amount of heat dissipated here is better or worse or about the same as, uh, you know, another solution that might be just, you know, a pure air solution on the graphics card with the all-in-one liquid cooler. So let's take a look at the uh, design aesthetic and some of the, the specifications for this particular card out of the box. Now the Hydro GFX, of course, as I said before, is based on the GTX 980 Ti. If you're not familiar, that's a GPU core uh, from NVIDIA. It's got 2816 CUDA cores. Um, in the Hydro GFX's case, out of the box, it's clocked at 1190 megahertz versus the 1000 uh, megahertz reference clock that NVIDIA recommends on the 980 Ti. The boost clock is 1291 versus 1075 from NVIDIA. The memory is six gigs of GDDR5. The memory clock out of the box is 7096 megahertz. <laughs> the rated TDP is uh, 260 watts, and the maximum TDP is 280 watts. Now that's out of the box. Now, so in their advertising material, they say that this is about a 20% overclock for about a 15% performance improvement. That's not universal across all the games, but in our testing, that was basically fair. Now we also had more overclock headroom than you get out of the box. So you can overclock it even though out of the box, it's already overclocked. The factory out of the box overclock for the Hydro GFX is actually pretty conservative. Um, with the overclock, with the out of the box configuration, I don't think we ever saw the graphics card get warmer than about 60 degrees C. That's really cold. I mean, consider that the reference card will pretty much immediately hit 82, 83 degrees C, uh, maybe more, especially if it's in this worst case scenario, like the A51 case. But overall for the testing, I was really surprised that it was able to maintain that temperature without the blower fan ramping up to vacuum cleaner levels of noise. In terms of how the graphics card is when it's idle and how the graphics card is for you know 1080p and 1440p workloads at you know medium medium high settings <laughs> this card doesn't seem to break a sweat with that it doesn't really seem to generate a lot of heat and so of course the fan noise is minimal now one thing to consider with this is that the fan that comes with this is a three pin fan so of course if you're going to use your motherboard for fan speed control you'll want to make sure that your motherboard properly supports fan speed control of three pin fans otherwise you'll need to get a four pin fan and swap that out you can also do a push-pull configuration, and I would really like to test a push-pull configuration, so we might do that with a follow-up video in case any of you guys are curious. Now, the dimensions on this card, even though it is a powerhouse card, are a little smaller than some of the other powerhouse cards that we've taken a look at. Now, like a lot of other 980 graphics cards, this thing has three DisplayPort 1.2 ports, one HDMI 2.0, and one DualLink DVI port. The DualLink DVI port is suitable for running, you know, 2560 by 1440 monitors, and you can run 4K at 60 hertz on the other DisplayPort 1.2 ports. So that's nice, especially if you've gone monitor crazy and are buying 4K 40 inch monitors from Korea left and right. Now the radiator here is a Corsair H55. This is sort of a copper micro fin setup. It is 120 millimeter. I think I might have liked to see 140 millimeters, but seeing as how well this 120 millimeter cooler does, I don't think that heat dissipation is really the limiting factor for the overclock. I think that 140 millimeter probably would have been overkill. Although if it hadn't been overkill, it would be pretty interesting to see if we can hit, you know, 1600 megahertz on this particular GPU um, with 140 millimeter cooler. Uh, so this actually also comes with a three year warranty. Now in terms of volume, uh, you know, I mentioned before that Corsair is one of the top, if not the top uh, all-in-one liquid cooler vendors in the world. So the situation there is what happens if your all-in-one cooler leaks and takes out other components with it. Well, Corsair's policy on that historically has been very good. If your all-in-one liquid cooler leaks and destroys something, they will replace it. So if you get one of these and you're worried about an all-in-one, you know, liquid cooler leak, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. I think that you'll be all set with, with this particular thing. Another thing on the all-in-one radiator here is I really like the braided tube design. You know, we saw that first on the uh, GTX 110i liquid cooler, but it's the same sort of braided design, albeit a little bit smaller tubes, on the all-in-one liquid cooler here. I really like the aesthetic of, of this particular design in terms of the, the braiding, and it feels really solid, like a solid piece of engineering. So I've been using this thing for a couple of weeks now, playing a bunch of different games and a bunch of different settings, and I have to say, this is one of the most overclockable cards that we've ever played with. The maximum speed that I've been able to get out of this thing is about 1580 for the boost clock. That's pretty crazy. Now, I did have to tweak some things and flash some other things and do some stuff that you're not supposed to do, but it did actually work pretty well. 1550, I would say, is stable, no problem. Um, 1560, maybe, it's pushing it a little bit. But 1520 to 1550 was easily achievable. The fact that you can hit 1550 to 1580-ish 
and not have the card be deafeningly loud was really good. Now I left everything on auto and a couple of times the, the base card I thought was getting a little warm so I sort of ratcheted up the blower fan speed and a little bit faster, a little bit louder than I would have liked but when I was pushing those kind of clocks it was crazy. Now there were a couple of reports on our forum of somebody that was achieving like 1600 plus with this but I never could figure out the formula to get beyond 1600 and have it actually be stable. I could manage GTA for about five minutes and then weird things would start happening and textures would disappear and I would have little green squares and it just wasn't a good situation. So overall I'm pretty excited about this. The other thing that I'm really excited about is I'm going to try to put this in SLI with another 980 and see what happens and cram it into that A51. So yeah the A51 is going to have not one but two capture cards the M.2 and two 980 ties in the Lee and Lee A51, which is one of the smallest full ATX cases you can get. I must be a madman, or maybe I'm just preparing for the LAN party. So if you got one of these or you're thinking about getting one of these or you have any questions, head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.